Hi, I'm Bobby Lee from Square. This tutorial is a walkthrough of our customer's API and how it integrates with orders and cards API to link together customer data. The customer's API enables third-party applications and systems to synchronize customer data with a customer directory. The API makes it easy to integrate custom functionality into e-commerce and other experiences like analytics, marketing, and loyalty. So I'm going to show you how I built a customer directory Rails app, including customer contact information, recent orders, cars on file, and buyer habits. First, I'll show you the directory I built in the browser and then head into the editor to show you how I built it. Let's start with the customer index page. Pretty simple here, just listing all of the customers. So let's click on the details page for Sandra. And as you can see, their name, phone number, and email address were all loaded via the customer's API. And then the cards API to pull in their cards on file. Then I used the orders API to pull in the customer's orders. In the buyer section, I used the orders API and some custom methods to show this customer's most recent visit, total visits, average spend, and total spent. Awesome. Okay, now that we know how this app runs, Let's dive into how I worked with three different APIs to build it. We'll start by looking over what the user views and work our way to the back end to see how that user experience was created. So I have the customer index here, which is listing all of this business's customers. So let's open the index method in the customer's controller to see how we set these variables. I created a custom method called all in the customer module because we're not looking at a normal Rails app with a local database here. Let's open that module and see how I'm grabbing all customers from the API. First, I'm initializing this Square API client and passing in the access token for my encrypted YAML credentials file, and then setting the environment to sandbox because we're just testing things out. Here's where we start working with the customer's API. In the all method, I'm first reaching out to the customer's API with dot customers, then calling the list customers method and dot data dot customers so it returns an array of customers I can iterate through with the dot each method in the view. So in the customer index view, you can see we are able to iterate through them like so and display their given name, phone number, and email address. Cool, now see this details link here? This will bring you to the customer show view. Let's open that file and go through it section by section and look at the show method in the customer's controller as well. So let's start with the customer details. I'm pulling in the customer's name, phone number, and email from the API like before, but now we have a customer variable that we've set in the controller so we can pass in a specific customer's ID. So let's open up the customer controller again and find the show method and see how we're pulling in a customer variable utilized throughout the view. Starting with the customer variable, we're grabbing the ID from the params and using the find method from the API to grab a specific customer. Cool. Back in the view, next section is the customer cards. I'm iterating through all cards on file for each customer and grabbing the card merchant slash brand and last four digits for each card. Now let's go to the controller again to see how the cards variable slash array is set using the cards API. We're calling the cards method I created in the module and passing in the customer's unique ID to find only the cards on file for a specific customer. So let's open the customer module to see how the cards method works. Calling the list cards method on the cards API passing in the customer ID passed from the view, and returning an array of customer-specific card objects from the return data. Alrighty, back in the view. Next section is listing the customer's orders. We're iterating through each order and grabbing the order's amount converted to dollars from cents and what time the order was placed from the created at variable. So same thing as before, back in the controller, let's go over how the orders variable pulls in this specific customer's orders via the orders API. As you can see, it's calling the orders method I set in the module and passing in the customer's ID. So let's go into the customer module to see how this method works. So calling the orders API search orders method and passing in the location ID of the business and querying via a customer filter with the customer ID. And that will return an array of all orders associated with that customer via the dot data dot orders method. All right, last but not least, the buyer summary section. So here we're doing things a little bit differently. We'll go through how we pull in the customer's last visit, total visits, average spend, and total spent. So let's start with our last visit. So taking the last orders created at attribute and converting the time to something legible from the response. Next, the total visits. I'm just using the size method on the returned number of orders, which will return the total number of orders. Now as for total spent, let's look in the controller. 
It's mapping through the orders and grabbing the total money attribute from each of the orders returned from the orders array and adding their amounts together. Then the average spend is the total spent divided by the number of orders. So back in the view, both the total spent and average spend are converted from cents to dollars. And that's it. So there you have it. We just went over a few different ways of working with the customer's API to create a rich customer's directory. First, how to grab attributes from the customer's API for basic customer details. Then how to use the cards API to display a customer's cards on file. Then how to use the orders API to display all of the customer's orders. And lastly, how to use a combination of the customers and orders API to generate a custom buyer summary. If you have any further questions, let us know in the comments. Happy coding.